Hey everyone, welcome to lesson 3.5, Cellular Respiration and Photosynthesis. So as we go through this lesson, as always, make sure to fill in your notes, keep up with your vocabulary. Um, but the first half of this lesson is going to be a review from Unit 1, and then the second half we're going to cover cellular respiration. So I want you to keep in mind, both of these processes are really complicated, okay? But as we go through this, um, kind of keep the big picture in mind, what goes in, what comes out, okay? Um, kind of the overall big details, and then whenever we get in class, then we will also review this as well, okay? So just to preface this lesson, try your best to not get caught up in the super minuscule details, okay? So um, first for our review, okay, cells run on glucose. Photosynthesis builds glucose, cellular respiration breaks it down. Um, for unit two in our biomolecules unit, we have seen this ring structure, okay, for glucose. And remember, carbohydrates uh, typically have this kind of ring structure, monosaccharides, and then your polysaccharides were things like starches with a lot of these little um, rings kind of brought together, okay? So glucose is an example of a sugar or carbohydrate, and the chemical formula is here, and we should have that memorized by now. Okay, ATP, we've also seen this quite a few times by now, but it's the energy molecule of all life. Remember the structure, you have an adenine, a ribosugar, and three phosphate groups. Okay, and then here we have ATP, ADP, and how that releases energy. Okay, again, we have seen this, but remember ADP was kind of like that rechargeable battery, it contains some energy, but fully powered ATP contains the most energy. Okay, ATP can easily release and store energy by breaking and reforming the bonds between the second and third phosphate group. Okay, so remember second and third phosphate group, that bond broken is what releases a lot of energy. Okay, and then for this question, how are these bonds broken? Well, if you remember from unit two, okay, that was through ATP hydrolysis, right? So that process ATP hydrolysis was what broke those bonds and released a lot of energy. So here's our photosynthesis equation, okay? So remember, um, it uses the energy of sunlight to convert water and carbon dioxide or your low energy reactants into the high energy sugars um, and oxygen as products. So now our uh, photosynthesis happens in your two phases. Okay, you had the light dependent reaction and light independent reaction. Okay, the light dependent was that energy capture and light independent was energy storage, okay? And then energy and electron carriers. So from unit one, okay, if you recall um, this NADPH, okay, this was our electron carrier. So if you remember, NADP plus was involved, it would pick up some electrons in a hydrogen ion, okay, it would then be converted to NADPH once it gained those molecules, okay, it's converted to NADPH, it would go and it would drop those off in the Calvin cycle and then it would go back and be ready to pick up more, okay? So electron carriers are going to be important as we talk about cellular respiration. And remember, at the end of the day, they're just compounds that can accept a pair of high energy electrons and transfer them along with most of their energy to another molecule. So again, high energy electrons are kind of like hot potatoes and your electron carriers are kind of like your oven mitt or things that can transport them okay so just keep this in mind as we go through cellular respiration so phase one your light dependent reaction remember it took place in the thylakoid sunlight was absorbed nadp plus and adp that were in the cell are converted to atp and nadph Water was required uh, as a source of electrons and hydrogen ions, and oxygen was released as a byproduct. So that was your first stage of photosynthesis. All right, your second one was the light independent reaction, also called the Calvin cycle. That took place in the stroma. ATP and NADPH produced by the light dependent reactions were used to produce high energy sugars such as glucose from carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is absorbed from the atmosphere and then remember sugars and carbohydrates were produced and both of the reactions work together, right? You have to have one reaction to power the other. Okay, so after that quick review, okay, and then if you forgot a lot of that information, it's perfectly fine to go back and rewatch the one point. 12, I believe is 1.12 lesson video if you'd like to do that, okay? But now we're going to move on to cellular respiration. So organisms get the energy they need from food, and cells don't simply burn food and release energy as heat. Instead, they break down food molecules gradually, capturing little bits of energy at key steps. 
So this enables cells to use the energy stored in the chemical bonds of food like glucose to synthesize compounds such as ATP that directly power the activities of the cell. Okay, so cellular respiration is the process that releases energy by breaking down glucose and other food molecules in the presence of oxygen. So make sure again, write down your equation, okay, get it in both symbols and in words, your left side reactants, right side products. So you have glucose plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide, water, and we get a lot of ATP. Okay, so kind of pause here and compare these two equations. Okay, so the equations for cellular respiration and photosynthesis are essentially just the reverse of each other, right? Photosynthesis removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and cellular respiration puts it back. Photosynthesis releases oxygen into the atmosphere and cellular respiration uses that oxygen to release energy from food. Okay, so as you're looking at these two, if you have the photosynthesis equation memorized, which we should, then basically just flip it and that is the cellular respiration equation, okay, except for this ATP here. So now we're going to go into the stages of cellular respiration. And again, this is where um, the details get kind of complicated. So again, keep the big picture in mind. So cellular respiration happens in three stages, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Most of the energy releasing pathways within cells require oxygen. And that's the reason why we need to breathe. So that's where we get that name, cellular respiration. The pathways of cellular respiration that require oxygen are said to be aerobic. Okay, so the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain are both aerobic pathways, again, because they require oxygen. The pathways that do not directly require oxygen are said to be anaerobic, and glycolysis is the anaerobic pathway. And here's your overall equation again. Okay, so our three stages that we're going to look at in a little bit more detail, and this is kind of a good like overall picture as we're going through these. So the first step, we have glycolysis, okay? Um, and it's known as glycolysis because that literally just means sugar breaking, okay? So glycolysis is the first set of reactions in which a molecule of glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid, okay? So here we have glucose, that is a six carbon compound. Pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound, so that's why we have two kind of like little sets of three here. Two ATP molecules are invested, okay, to get the overall process going. But overall, four ATP molecules are produced. So our net gain from glycolysis are two ATPs per one glucose molecule. Okay, the other important thing that happens is four high energy electrons are produced or passed to the carrier NAD plus to produce NADH, okay? And NADH carries these electrons to the electron transport chain. So again, if you're confused, like what is NAD plus and what is NADH? Again, just an electron carrier. That's literally their job is to take electrons and carry them from one part or one phase to the next, okay? Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm and it does not require oxygen. So it is said to be anaerobic. Okay, so that first stage again, occurred in the cytoplasm, but now we have to pause here and kind of talk about the structure of the mitochondria. So go ahead and on your notes, okay, kind of draw a rough sketch of the mitochondria here and make sure to label it. Okay, so remember the mitochondria is often called the powerhouse or the energy factory of the cell. The main job is to supply ATP, okay, because again, that's the cell's main energy carrying molecule. So the mitochondria are suspended in the cytosol or the cytoplasm, okay? Again, they are oval shaped and they have two membranes. So first we have an outer membrane, okay, this piece here, um, surrounding the whole organelle and an inner one, okay? And the inner membrane here um, is kind of like all these folds, protrusions, okay? And they call them cristae, which are basically the folds, okay? And that's used to increase the surface area. The space between the outer membrane, okay, and the inner membrane, so basically kind of like this empty-ish space here, that's called that intermembrane space, okay? And the compartment enclosed in the inner membrane here is called the matrix, all right? So again, make sure to kind of have a rough sketch down of your structure of a mitochondria, okay? 
So although this multi-compartment structure may seem kind of complicated to us, it's really important actually that the mitochondria has this structure and has all these folds and different membranes because that's really important for our process of cellular respiration, um, which we're going to see. Okay, so phase two, we have the Krebs cycle. This is also called the citric acid cycle citric acid cycle. So pyruvic acid from glycolysis reacts to form acetyl-CoA, okay, which then enters the Krebs cycle. So this is kind of like an intermediate step, okay, um, right before we start our Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle is the second stage of cellular respiration in which pyruvic acid is broken down into carbon dioxide and a series of energy extracting reactions. So this step of cellular respiration does look very complicated and it is okay but again remember what goes in and what comes out and kind of what overall is happening so the pyruvic acid from glycolysis is used to make carbon dioxide NADH ATP and FADH2 okay because glycolysis produces two molecules of pyruvic acid from each glucose molecule the Krebs cycle turns twice for each glucose molecule that enters glycolysis so essentially for every turn of the cycle, one ATP molecule is produced, and overall, two ATP molecules are produced per molecule of glucose. The electron carriers involved are NAD plus and FAD, and after they accept electrons, NAD plus becomes NADH, and FAD becomes FADH2, okay? The Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. So again, if we look at this structure here, this is the matrix, and that is that innermost compartment of the mitochondria. Oxygen is required, so it is said to be aerobic. So going back, okay, again, this area, okay, this was the matrix. Again, that's enclosed within the inner membrane, okay, that mitochondrial matrix. Okay, so here are those photos kind of zoomed in a little bit better. Um, so remember, you just have to have the basic understanding of what goes in, what goes out, where it occurs, and how much ATP is produced. So here's a close-up of the Krebs cycle. So pyruvic acid here, okay, enters and it's turned into acetyl-CoA, okay, and then that acetyl-CoA is basically what enters the Krebs cycle up here. Um, important electron carriers such as FADH2, K and NADH are produced, and one ATP is generated per turn of the cycle. So again, for every glucose molecule, we end up getting two ATP molecules from the Krebs cycle. Okay, so our last phase, the electron transport chain. So glycolysis, okay, overview. Glycolysis generates high-energy electrons that are passed to NAD+, and that forms NADH. Those NADH molecules can then enter the mitochondria, where they join NADH and FADH2, generated by the Krebs cycle. The electrons are then passed from the carriers into the last step, uh, which is the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain uses the high-energy electrons from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle to synthesize ATP from ADP. Okay, so the series of electron carrier proteins that shuttle high energy electrons during ATP generating reactions is the electron transport chain. So high energy electrons from NADH and FADH2 are passed down from the carrier to carrier down to the ETC. Water is formed when oxygen accepts the electrons in combination with hydrogen ions, and energy generated by the ETC is used to move uh, hydrogen ions across the inner mitochondrial membrane and into the inner membrane space. So overall, this step okay, produces the most ATP. It's about 32 molecules of ATP which are produced in the uh, electron transport chain. The electron transport chain occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane, and oxygen is required, so that's said to be aerobic. Okay, so here's kind of this diagram zoomed in a little bit better. So let's kind of go over this, okay? So this red area here, that's the uh, inner membrane space. Okay, the cytoplasm out here is this light tan. Again, that's the area outside of the mitochondria. This orangish area, that's the matrix, okay? And then here, this kind of squiggly tan line, that's the inner mitochondrial membrane, okay? These purple things, okay, right here, they are called the electron carriers or the electron transporters, and basically they're just made up of proteins, okay? So you can kind of think of these protein channels like when we reviewed cellular transport. And then you notice the blue dots here. So go ahead and take a look at all the blue dots. Okay, so those are the hydrogen ions. 
there is a higher concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space than in the matrix. Okay, and again, the matrix was this orange area. So how do we get ATP from this process? So look over here at this diagram. We have this enzyme called ATP synthase. Okay, so this is the ATP synthase. And remember, enzymes are proteins. So the charge difference of ions across the membrane forces the H plus ions through this channel. And what's going to happen is that gonna, is going to cause this to spin. Okay, and then whenever ATP synthase spins, um, it's kind of like a motor. So as it spins, it creates ATP from ADP. Okay. So let's go ahead and pause here. Okay, try out this check for understanding, and then we will come back and answer these together. Okay, so number one, the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, and the electron transport cha chain occurs in the inter inner, mitochondri uh, whew, inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, remember that space here, all right? In the intermembrane space, this red area, there is a higher concentration of hydrogen ions compared to the orange area of this matrix, okay? As the hydrogen ions diffuse through this ATP synthase channel, what type of transport was that? Okay, so beca because they are diffusing from high concentration in that inner membrane space to low, lower concentration in the matrix through a protein channel, that would be facilitated diffusion, right? Because high to low and you are using a protein channel, okay? And the last one, is energy required? No. So the movement of the ions through ATP synthase is passive transport. Again, that is facilitated diffusion specifically. Okay, so now let's go back and think about our total energy produced from aerobic cellular respiration. So aerobic respiration, again, is the process by which organisms use oxygen to turn fuel, such as fats and sugars, into chemical energy. So glycolysis was the anaerobic process, but the Krebs cycle and ETC are both aerobic. Aerobic respiration produces much more ATP than anaerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration just essentially refers to all three of those steps together, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the ETC. Together, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain produce about 36 molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose. So here's kind of your breakdown. Glycolysis had a net gain of two, Krebs cycle had two, and then the electron transport chain about 32. Okay, now this is important to remember. So the number of ATP molecules produced by molecule of glucose is variable and it's difficult to exactly determine. Okay, the number produced is estimated to be between 30 to 42 ATPs per glucose. But 36 is kind of that estimated or accepted value, okay? So whenever we ask you like how many over ATP are produced overall by aerobic respiration, 36 is kind of that like safe-ish estimate, okay? When we eat, complex carbohydrates are broken down into glucose, and lipids and proteins can also be broken down, um, but they would enter the Krebs cycle or glycolysis at one of several steps just because they're broken down a little bit differently than complex carbohydrates. Okay, The 36 ATP molecules generate, generated represent about 36% of the total energy of glucose. So overall, the cell is pretty efficient at using food, and the remaining energy is released as heat. So our last thing we're going to talk about is anaerobic respiration, okay? So we have these three stages, okay? We now have heard aerobic respiration, but anaerobic respiration is the process by which organisms can break down sugars to generate energy in the absence of oxygen, okay? And anaerobic respiration produces less ATP than aerobic, and it takes place in two stages. We have glycolysis, then fermentation. So let's look at fermentation here a little bit more. Okay, so fermentation is the second stage of anaerobic respiration and is the process by which cells release energy in the absence of oxygen. So basically what happens during fermentation is the cells convert NADH to NAD plus by passing high energy electrons back to the pyruvic acid. This allows glycolysis to produce a steady supply of ATP. So basically what happens is this is just um, a process to where NADH and NADH NAD plus can continue to be regenerated. Okay, so it's just kind of like a standby, allowing this to be regenerated over and over, okay, to allow glycolysis to occur, to occur but it's not producing that a ton of ATP. Okay, so fermentation occurs in the cytoplasm of cells, and there are two different forms. We have alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Okay, and then here are the two equations just so you can read those two. 
alcoholic fermentation. Um, yeast and a few other microorganisms can use that. And this is actually used to produce alcoholic beverages and also it, it's the same process that causes bread dough to rise. Lactic acid fermentation, certain bacteria can produce this as a waste product, and there's also um, pickles, sauerkraut, kimchi. Those are a few things produced using lactic acid fermentation. Humans, okay, we are also lactic acid fermenters. So during brief periods without oxygen, many of the cells in our bodies have ca are capable of producing ATP. So a classic example of that is whenever you exercise or have like that quick sprint like thing your body's usually deprived of oxygen your legs really kind of start to burn and that is that lactic acid fermentation that you are feeling okay so we have reached our exit ticket go ahead pause here and try to answer these on your own So number one, the reactants were glucose and oxygen for cellular respiration. Number two, the products were carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. The three stages of cellular respiration were glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. Okay, um, Where did each of these play, uh, take place? Glycolysis was in the cytoplasm. Okay, The Krebs cycle and electron transport chain were both in the mitochondria, Okay, but specifically, the Krebs cycle took place in the matrix and the ETC took place in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, what were NAD plus and FAD? Okay, so they were both electron carriers, right? NAD plus turns into NADH and FAD turns into FADH2 during the Krebs cycle. They are then used in the electron transport chain, chain to convert ATP from ADP. Number six, overall, how much ATP is produced? Okay, for aerobic cellular respiration and approximately 36 ATP were produced per glucose molecule. Number seven, the two stages of anaerobic respiration were glycolysis, then fermentation, okay, and then number eight, the last one, the two types of fermentation were alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. So that is the end of lesson 3.5, all right? Go back, make sure that you have your notes completed and your vocabulary, okay, reach out with any questions, and thank you for watching.